Hi everyone, Larry Wim with Summit Imaging, an ultrasound and mammography equipment support organization. And today uh, we have Carolyn. Hi Larry. Hi, I'm Carolyn Coffin and I'm from Sound Ergonomics, um, an ergonomic consulting company that deals with sonographer injury. And I'm also an adjunct professor at Sal University and a sonographer of 25 years. And today uh, we just wanted to you know, talk to Carolyn about uh, her experience with, you know, improperly remanufactured parts used in transducers, uh, hidden inside transducer repairs. Um, obviously, you know, at Summit Imaging, we don't use any remanufactured parts because it doesn't preserve the safety and performance of these transducers. And we actually have Carolyn that has experience, um, you know, with these kinds of transducers and would love for her to kind of share her experience on, you know, remanufactured crystals instead of transducers and remanufactured cable assemblies to be, uh, you know, specific today and, and how they've maybe frustrated her through her, her working process of, of trying to give, you know, really high quality patient care. Well, Larry, you know, it's interesting because I've learned a lot in my um, time working with you here at Summit because sonographers don't know what goes into their equipment. They don't know how the transducers are put together. They don't know what components are in them. They just rely on the transducer to do its job. So it's, I think, important, and I think it's valuable for sonographers to actually have some knowledge of the fact that they should have all the right components in their transducers. Some of the examples that, that I've had to deal with, and, and one in particular that stands out re related to cables, is um, having the strain relief cuff and the cable separate from the transducer. And so you're scanning with a transducer that you're worried about the, the cables and the little uh, elements within it. And then other things that are frustrating are anything that slows you down or takes away from your ability to get a good image. And once you've corrected everything that you can think of from a user interface, then you have to start relying on your transducer to actually be correctly repaired and correctly assembled. So things like having one crystal drop out where you're missing one line of sight. What's under that? Are you missing a liver mass? Are you missing something in the kidney? Are you missing some small thing in an OB ultrasound? Or having the color not fill completely. Is there an area of the transducer that's affecting the filling of the, of the vessel with color? And then if you have some um, issues with your pulse Doppler, you're not getting good peaks, you're not getting accurate signals, you're getting filling in of the acoustic window, you're not seeing the information that you need. And those kinds of things have been frustrating for me because I can't solve them. I can't figure out how to make the image better because I don't know what's wrong with my transducer and I don't know really that it's the transducer or perhaps the cable. So I think that you're relying on the parts being there and correct and you're relying on the transducer to be manufactured and repaired in a very professional way. Thank you. So, you know, f for us, uh, that, that means a lot because, you know, Carolyn's helped us so much uh, with image quality and, and understanding, you know, the impacts of low quality uh, remanufactured components inside of the transducers, how it impacts image quality. And, you know, to engineers and to uh, technicians out there in ultrasound support organizations, um, you know, a wire may seem like a wire or, you know, a plastic may seem like just a plastic or, um, you know, a crystal may just seem like a crystal, but there's so much more to it. Um, and the specs to remanufacture back to the OEM specifications are unavailable. And so it's always a complete guess if that's the correct specs that are being remanufactured to or not. And so, you know, for us, you know, we really just take a safe and reliable approach of just using the OEM components uh, to be able to repair our customers' transducers. And, you know, I think we're finding that they're lasting a lot longer. Mm -hmm. uh, the mean time between failures is much longer uh, with the higher quality parts. And, you know, it's just there's no risk uh, to, to, you know, misdiagnosis because or uh, a decrease in sonographer throughput because you're fighting that image all the time. And... If you have a transducer that's, you know, subpar, you're losing exam room time. You're losing revenue. So if the transducer isn't usable, then the department and the hospital and, or the facility suffers as a whole. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's just you know kind of echoing that whole total cost of ownership, and you know Carolyn's you know been there, done that, and and has seen the ramifications of uh, you know mm. subpar components and transducers. So. You know, thank you so much for sure. chatting with us today. <laughs> uh, we hope you learned something. Uh, you know, we are here to you know educate uh, healthcare facilities on you know how you can lower your total cost of ownership. And you know, please subscribe to us on YouTube if you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on LinkedIn. And thank you so much for taking the time. Bye.